Well, in the wake of this deadly bicycle crash, the cycling community is coming together to raise awareness and heal after the tragic death of five bicyclists. News Channel 3's Nikki Zizaza is live in Kalamazoo where a silent ride just got underway. Nikki. That's right, Kate. More than 100 members of Kalamazoo cycling community have shown up here. All of these people here in support of those who died. And I caught up with one group who set up a memorial of ghost bikes at the scene of a crash. Stripping these bicycles of cables and into skeletal frames. Spray painting these bikes a chalky white. Like a cross planted at a roadside memorial, these ghost bikes will be placed at the very spot five cyclists were hit by a truck and killed Tuesday night paralyzing Kalamazoo cycling community, but only for a moment. All of us here were just sick to our stomachs with the anticipation of who was involved and not in the unknown. And in this volunteer driven effort, Meg Zapolowski, a member of a competitive Kalamazoo bike club, says the cycling community wants to draw attention to deadly vehicle versus bicycle accidents. Within probably close to 35 minutes, from me putting out a post that said I needed bikes. Um, I mean, I could have had a whole fleet here. Meg saying while she is overcome with grief, she won't let this tragedy derail cyclists from memorializing those who died. I've been on that route hundreds of times and felt safe hundreds of times. Um, it's, I think that uh, riding a bike is a pastime love and it's something that we should all continue to do in their memory. Five bikes now sit along this fence as a backdrop along this lonely country road to act as a solemn reminder cyclists were killed here. Members of the cycling community tell me this silent ride is going to be at least five miles long and many here are also saying that this tragedy is not going to stop them from riding. For now we're live in Kalamazoo, Nikki Zizaza, News Channel 3. A local drumming group is honoring one of the bicyclists who died and who was also part of their team. A News Channel 3's Nikki Zizaza joining us live in Kalamazoo to tell us how one of the five victims is being remembered. Nikki. Kay, Melissa Hughes of Augusta was part of a Japanese style drumming group and tonight I spoke to members of the group she was once a part of who say they'll be drumming for her funeral service tomorrow. With drumsticks clutched in their hands in a beat by beat manner. This group of seven pounds taiko drums in communal precision. The thunderous sound filling this indoor baseball gym hidden in an upstairs building on Kalamazoo's north side. Esther Vandicar, who leads this drumming group, says striking these barrel drums is all that can drown out the pain from the death of their teammate, Melissa Hughes. She had such a wonderful spirit and she reminded me of myself. Hughes, one of five bicyclists struck and killed by a truck driver while out on a casual bike ride nearly a week ago. She was doing another thing that she loved. I mean, she loved being um, a bicyclist. This Kalamazoo Tycho family saying they played with Hughes every week for at least five hours, rehearsing for performances around West Michigan, and say her death has devastated their Tycho family. She was um, a very good player and she only had a couple of years under her belt. Her teammates telling News Channel 3 the devoted mother drummed with the group for nearly three years and say it is her beaming smile and steadfast joy they will miss the most. She had that uh, redheaded vi vitality. She's a very positive person. Um, she, it was fun to play with her. And now this close-knit family will have the unthinkable duty of playing at Hugh's funeral and say the beat must go on. The group tells me they will play her favorite song titled Inori and they believe it's something she would have wanted. For now, we're live in Kalamazoo. Nikki Zizaza, News Channel. News Channel 3's Nikki Zizaza is live in Kalamazoo where the Finish the Ride event ended just hours ago. Nikki. Kate, this is where the nearly 30 mile bike ride began and I spoke to many riders who say they are touched. Lance Armstrong was here for the ride, but they want people to remember this was about the victims and members of the chain gang. 
What happened here one week ago is still difficult to comprehend. The cycling community coming together now in solidarity. We can't allow the evil and stupidity and ignorance of those that decide to harm folks through their actions stop us from living our lives. The tragedy attracting national attention and well-known cyclist Lance Armstrong to bike-friendly Kalamazoo. It was a week ago, I was in Colorado with some friends and I, in my phone I got a text message with a link to some breaking news it said five cyclists had been killed in Kalamazoo. Oops. Grief combined with gratitude, Armstrong joined Kalamazoo's vibrant cycling community to complete a 28.5 mile ride in honor of the five who died. Let's go do it again and uh, we'll finish the ride uh, for the for those fallen and we'll finish the ride for those that are still in the hospital uh, who can't be here. Before the ride, Armstrong privately visited with the injured and family members of the five victims in the hospital. The nine cyclists struck by a driver of a pickup truck, all members of the chain gang, a local group that has been riding around Kalamazoo for years. I think they'd be honored. Um, uh, they'd uh, be surprised. It's awful. It's awful tragedy. And as Kalamazoo rides on, family and friends of the five killed revisit the site of the crash on this one week anniversary. More than 800 cyclists were in attendance for this ride and I spoke to some members of the chain gang and they say it's the community support that's going to keep them riding. For now, we're live in Kalamazoo. Nikki Zizaza, News Channel 3. And just over a week after the Kalamazoo biking tragedy, a member of the cycling group is speaking out for the first time about the crash that killed his friends and sent his wife to the hospital. And News Channel 3's Nikki Zizaza spoke with the husband of Jennifer Johnson and she's joining us live. And Nikki, Steve Johnson says this horror really has turned his whole life upside down. That's right, Andy. That's exactly what he said. I spoke to the husband of Jennifer Johnson, who's also the president of the chain gang, and he says while he wasn't on that ride last week, he says this entire ordeal has turned his whole life upside down. The nightmare captivated the entire nation. How could a group of bicyclists get mowed over from behind? Yeah, I was home cooking dinner for the kids when I got the call. Nine riders, each of them hit. Four injured and five dead. Among the survivors, Steve Johnson's wife, Jennifer. I had received a call from the hospital saying that Jennifer had asked them to contact me. And so that was the huge sigh of relief. And eight days later, Steve is still living between these hospital walls by his wife's side, but is haunted by the deadly crash. We lost five friends this week and you know, it's heartbreaking to hear him describe the loss he feels from the death of his fellow chain gang members killed along this Cooper Township Road. The world was a better place with them and the world is a worse place without them. The father of three saying he was overwhelmed by the roller coaster of emotions. Which one of my friends are still alive and which one of my friends didn't make it? And exactly one week after the collision, the community pulled together to complete the ride the chain gang could not and pedaling along with Kalamazoo cycling community was well-known cyclist Lance Armstrong. I think Lance was a catalyst that made this ride happen that might not have otherwise happened, but it took the community together to make the ride as special as it was. Meanwhile, as Jennifer's injuries mend themselves, Steve says so will his heart and their love for riding. Steve says he knows his wife Jennifer is a fighter and she'll be back on her bike in no time. Right now she's undergoing physical therapy and slowly recovering. Nikki Zizaza, News Channel. The three month anniversary of Kalamazoo's biking tragedy. Another survivor is speaking out about that horrifying event and her painful recovery. Jennifer Johnson is one of four people who survived that deadly crash. News Channel 3's Nikki Zizaza is live in Kalamazoo now and spoke to Johnson, who is gradually recovering from her injuries. Nikki. Andy, I'm live at the location where that horrifying accident happened, and today I spoke with survivor Jennifer Johnson, who says it's still difficult for her to complete daily tasks around the house. And she says today was only her second day back to work, three months after the crash, and she says she has a long road to recovery. 
pretty silent. Jennifer Johnson is now ready to tell her story about surviving the deadly bicycle collision that shook West Michigan and attracted national attention. I didn't understand even at that point the full extent of my injuries. I recall telling the first responders that there was something wrong with my leg, um, which was painfully obvious. Um, but that was, I just thought I would they would fix it and I would move on. But moving on turned into months of grueling and painful physical therapy to heal from seven broken bones, chipped teeth, a concussion, plus a broken femur. It still seems pretty surreal. It's hard to process it all. Um, it, it doesn't seem like it's reality. You go get a book from your room. And trying to bounce back after the devastating crash, the mother of three recalls the horror her cycling group endured when an erratic driver slammed into the group on this Cooper Township Road, killing five and injuring Four. I have full memory of everything up until about a half mile prior to the accident and then um, I have like Swiss cheese memory. Johnson says she still feels a mix of anger and grief towards Charles Pickett Jr., the man accused of taking handfuls of pills and muscle relaxers before plowing into the group of cyclists. I still do forgive him but I am still sad by the loss of my friends and um, it's, it's a tragedy that is so extreme that it does invoke anger, but it, you can't stay in that place. It's not healthy. But as she recovers, she says the pain of losing her friends is what remains incredibly raw. All five of them were just outstanding individuals um, with good hearts. Johnson says she's still undergoing physical therapy, but she plans to get back on her bike in the coming months. And she also wants to thank the community of Kalamazoo for their continued support. For now, I'm live in Kalamazoo, Nikki Zaza, News Channel 3, live at 10 on the CW7.